This next composition of mine is called The Land of If, and it's uh, inspired by another favourite author of mine, Paul Auster, who wrote a book, uh, The Book Invisible. And this is his um, reflections on uh, a, a, you know, a, a love that never um, was to be, a land of if. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, this next piece is one of mine. It's a piece called A Test. Uh, the title means not much. And the content of it is derived from some scales or interval patterns that I've been playing with for the last couple of years. Uh, and it features the remarkable Ben Hanlon on the double bass. This is A Test.
We're going to uh, continue now with another piece of mine. Uh, this one is called Cast Over.
Thank you. This next piece is a composition by me called A White Lie. And uh, once again, is, as is my want these days, uh, just write compositions based on bits and pieces that I'm reading. This is inspired by a wonderful novel uh, by Australian author Elliot Perlman called The Street Sweeper. This is a piece called A White Lie.
Thanks very much. We're going to finish off uh, our set with a piece of mine uh, called Plod, Plod, Stumble, Plod, which is um, in reference to the treachery of the domestic vortex, which sometimes gets us all. Um, thanks to Martin Jackson and the Melbourne Jazz Co-op for putting this on. We're um, wrapped to be included in the first uh, of first recording for their uh, online series. So thank you for that. And keep supporting the MJC by um, coming to these online concerts. Plod, plod, stumble, plod.
As a collective trio, what was the genesis of um, getting together? Well, as musicians, we'd known each other in various capacities for a long period of time. Uh, Anthony and Huge worked together at uh, the Polytechnic and have known each other through various musical projects as well. I knew Anthony through a number of projects we did with Nathan Slater. And Huge and I go way back in that Huge taught me at high school. And also, I've been a big fan of Ishish Ish and the Hudangas and Huge's various quartets over the years. So it was something we were always excited about doing. And the idea of the trio sort of existed before we even knew what it would be. And then as we came together, we sort of had this idea that we wanted it to feel really like a band, that we all knew the songs extremely well and had rehearsed them for a long period of time so that rather than sort of discovering them in the gigs, they were already embedded and we understood what they were and we could enjoy playing them to an audience from a place of really feeling like we strongly knew what the musical content was. And it sort of grew out of a year of rehearsing like that and a Melbourne Jazz Co-op performance at the Recital Centre. I think because you know the music so well, it allows you to have a three-way conversation in it. There's a lot of flexibility, I hear, in the, the performances. Um, is there any um, way you've looked at uh, different roles in the group? I mean, one of the things that we've kind of had to get our heads around as an ensemble is that we don't have a drummer. So how, what is the kind of the, the uh, practicalities of that? What, I mean, there's the strengths and weaknesses so um, we've had conversations around my role as a rhythm player because my tendency is to play probably in a more open and sparse way, you know, probably through years of playing with groups like Frock and so on and exploring those more textural things. And so I know that it's not always helpful, particularly for Eugene, if I'm you know, sitting you know, away from the time. So for me, there's a, a bigger responsibility in that way. And, but on the, the other hand is, of course, like any ensemble like this, is just looking for the, the ebb and flow and the, the sort of the interplay between, between the three of us, mm. constant search. I think one of the really nice things about the ensemble is that it's sort of grown out of an appreciation for both the traditional roles of our instruments and wanting mm. to not play those roles. So there will be times where I am being a baseline sort of traditional role of a double bass player for a tune but then there'll also be a tune where I'm playing melodies either bowed or pizzicato and the others are accompanying me and we all sort of share the various musical roles and it's sort of grown out of wanting to explore while accordion bass and trumpet may seem unusual at first as being all acoustic instruments being instruments that have the areas of harmony Bass, lo bass notes and rhythm and melody covered, we've then had a lot of room to explore what they sound like together and how we can break those sort of formulaic ideas down. Yeah, I think you um, uh, have an incredible variety of textures, um, especially with the, uh, the Arco bass um, and your facility with that. So uh, it's, it's uh, no shortage of variety in the music. <laughs> And muted trumpet at times? Muted trumpet, yeah. I think um, I'm coming around more and more. I generally don't play mutes, but um, I'm coming more and more around to the idea of the cup mute, particularly for some reason. That's just really um, exciting me at the moment. And for you, Eugene, this is um, uh, a real contrast to all the other groups that you're in. Yeah, this is the least jazzy of the groups, I guess, that I'm, in some ways, that I'm playing in at the moment. Um, it's sometimes difficult, actually, for me to not play <laughs> jazzy, you know, quaver-based lines, but I'm also just growing to accept that if that's kind of what I'm hearing at the time, then there's, you know, it's not, um, it's not totally out of context to do that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And can you tell us about the uh, plans for an album? We recorded an album in this very space uh, toward the end of 2019 um, with Nico Schäuble as the engineer. And we're very close to signing off on the final mix of that, so we'll be launching that through Bandcamp soon. Thank you for uh, launching the series. It's a fantastic start, and uh, I think you're a perfect band for this format. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Mark.